All right, guys. The topic of this blog post is get good ingredients. This is very important. And I know this is going to sound like a little bit of uh, me preaching, but really I'm preaching to myself because I tend to make the same mistakes over and over and just, uh, you know, fail a lot when writing music, creating new things. Uh, here's a drum loop that I got from a website that has drum loops. And the reason that I got this, this drum loop got me started in this entire song. Uh, check out like parts of the song. Whoa. Hold on. Just like a little excerpt. And, and check out the depth and the complexity and the layering and it's not finished, but I think it's it's starting to sound promising. So clearly, I've been listening to a lot of Ports of Canada, maybe too much, but I don't care. It's not going to end up sounding totally like them. But right now, it kind of does. That's fine. So back to uh, getting good ingredients. I started with this drum loop right here. Check it out. And then just like a little extra there. And that's it. That's pretty much what I used. I might have taken some other fills from, you know, something else, but that's pretty much it. I used that to create this thing right here. Uh, let's check it out. This thing. As you can hear, there's some reverb there. There's some delay, panned, some filtering. I turned my drum loop that I just played into this thing. There's also some delay there, some stuff. Let me take off the first one. So I mangled that thing until it turned into that. I still have my original drum loop, and I'm making more parts out of it. I also created this thing down here. Basically the same thing, maybe pitched down with some saturation, a room. There's also this thing, the same thing with uh, brightness. And by the way, I kind of, uh, there's this uh, thing on Ableton where you freeze track and then you consolidate the track and you get rid of all the effects and you save CPU. If I play all four things that I just played with you, uh, to you, uh, it, they sound like this. So back to my uh, topic there, good ingredients. The original loop that I played, uh, this guy over here, which it's EQ, you know, there's some bass in there. Okay, I should undo that. Uh, that gave me, first of all, a good sounding drum in a room. Like naturally, it was recorded in some room, so I have some spatial things going on. I also have the feel of a dream, of a real drummer, which is very important because that's one of my weaknesses. I don't play drums, and every time I try to come up with beats on my own, I fail. Or not fail, but it just doesn't sound as good as... It just doesn't sound pro, you know? you can. It's not a drummer making it. So on this tune, I'm basing my groove on a real drummer. And that gives me like a, the push and pull that I might need later. So, so I have these four things. Let's play them again. On a previous post, I showed you guys how to extract MIDI. I think I did that yesterday. It's on the website. From these loops, you can extract uh, MIDI parts. And I created this clap or snare.
which is all MIDI. It has a, you know, a 909 and two claps, and they all have, uh, well, two of them have, like, very heavy LFO uh, things going on so that there's some variation with every hit. Uh, there's also some reverb that glues all the, sound to, all the sounds together. I've done tutorials on this as well. It's called uh, Reverb for Glue or something like that. Um, then I did the same thing with a kick. Same thing. I uh, used some samples. I used the, I extracted the groove. And this kick, as you can hear, has layers. I have an operator, which I did a tutorial on layering by using operator. We got this thing. As you can see, I put delay on that operator. There's like a little slap thing going on. And there's also a hi-hat. And that hi-hat helps. I specifically picked a hi-hat that sounds like the drum loop that I originally, that was like my starting point. Okay, so it glues everything together. So back to using good ingredients. My original drum loop is a very good sounding drum loop. And, you know, if you're going to make pasta, you got to get good tomatoes to be competitive with the extremely good restaurants out there. I'm not saying you're going to be as good as the uh, seasoned chefs, but at least when you put those tomatoes in a, in a pan, the sauce is probably going to be really good just because the tomatoes are good. So I, and I'm sorry to go on, off on a tangent about food. I love food, and I think there are a lot of similarities between food and music. It's basically the same thing. You're cooking something, and you're using ingredients. Yeah. Okay, next, I created a, ha a hi-hat. Uh, hold on. Let's just uh, listen to that hi-hat real quick. As you can see, I added a guitar amp because everything I have so far is kind of dirty sounding. So again, the, the goal is to glue everything that I'm working with. So since er all the other loops kind of sound dirty, I put a guitar amp on the hi-hat. And there is some... Uh, some delay that I added before. Actually, no, the delay is, I have a aux track here. Okay, let's put everything back on and let's talk, I'm gonna just show you a few more things. Uh, the last thing I did was I, I took this drum loop, another, a different drum loop from a like a vinyl collection that I own. You can find these online. Like just search for vinyl, like beat drops or something like that. Uh, check it out. Uh, I am sure if you have reason or something like that, you've heard things like these. Uh, but however, I put some effects on it. I put an EQ and a filter, fat filter. I also had to stretch, as you can see. See, I marked my own points to make sure it grooves with everything else I have. But I did not want that kick drum, so I just, okay? I put an EQ, and then I put a filter with a modulator. This guy is amazing. And um, what this does is, if you go to the mix here, see how I'm automating the mix of the effect. Here, the effect is full on, check it out. So we have this uh, thing wired to here, something like that, and close it because I already had it. There you go. See? You hear that? When you have that going on with everything else, that is some complex stuff. And I know I talk a lot about simplicity and keeping things simple, but within the simple, you have to have some, uh, I mean, you should have some depth and complexity to make sure the simple is not so simple. Listen to everything. Let's add that kick drum and those samples. Let's listen to the whole thing. All the track, I obviously added uh, bass and synths with the Prophet 08, which sounds great. And you know, sounds like Vorza Canada and I have some, check it out, I'm gonna shut up.
Anyway, this is work in progress. I just wanted to share with you. I just had the uh, kind of realization, which I've had before, but I always forget that it's it's okay to you uh, use external things like loops and things that somebody else made. And if you have a friend that can record something for you, from for you, that's even better. But in my case, I, I I don't have any friends, so that's why I make this blog. No, I have a few friends, but um, yeah. That's a bad joke. That's kind of sad, actually. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to leave it there. I hope this was useful. Uh, useful and uh, yeah, have a good weekend. Later.